and we're back with a potential final round. I'm sitting here with my boy, Do Flamingo, who's most certainly going to win this uh, this tournament. How you doing, Ying? Uh, I wish I had a background for my vote right now, but I gotta <laughs> say, I want to vote with the same person. It, I, I get, I want Blue to win. I okay. honestly want Blue to win because we haven't seen Blue win NA yet, despite NA liking Blue so much. Man, I feel like I've succeeded today. I have turned Ying into a blue believer, which is honestly, that's the goal. <laughs> so uh, we're so there are three undefeateds left, guys. And we're in the unfortunate scenario that we talked about where it's a purple, a blue, and a green. And guess who green matches up with by the unlucky nature of the gods? Blue versus green. Naturally, blue does have a better matchup. So let's let's go ahead and see if this uh, if this Eustace player, Eustace Captain Kid, is able to teach us how we can potentially win this matchup. So it looks like the blue player will be off to going first uh, and passing it right back to Kid with a law on the play. Oh. He's got the Bonnie, Bonnie, so very good start by both players. Every green match that we I've commentated today, I haven't necessarily seen a Bonnie or many veggies being tossed around. So we'll go Bonnie, and then we'll trigger the Bonnie. The Bonnie and trigger turn one is as so it's so good it's you get so to, powerful there's the drake drake and um what's his name uh five cost guy shoot i'm black i'm drawing a blank because i have not commentated a lot of green lately you mean uh, uh what is basil. It, basil hawkins basil, yeah basil hawkins yeah. that's really yeah basil hawkins and drake those two are crucial extremely crucial to potentially win in this matchup because of how many times Basil could possibly swing and Hawk uh Drake given the extra that power. Boost. However, due to the nature of blue of sending everything back to your hand, it's really tough. Okay, and I really do like this play from uh Kevin. Like I said, not taking any early aggro from the green player while sitting behind a couple of blockers <laughs> is perfectly fine. Uh, the only part that's unfortunate of this start from the blue player is the fact that he didn't just immediately send Tamaru on curve. Because if you have Law to send Tamaru, it's almost impossible, actually. I'm just going to say it is impossible for the green player to remove it. So we're going to go ahead, six here at the leader. That's going to go ahead and fetch out a 2k counter. And then we're just going to simply Sobbles the X Drake away, buying us a bonus turn. Yeah. This is really yeah. interesting. He's uh, Kevin is playing a little fast and loose with it because Sobbles is such an important card in this matchup. Um, but if he does have a Doflamingo and things like that in his hand, he doesn't need to go ahead and like hold the Sobbles for later as the Doflamingo will act as a Sobbles. Oh, there's the promo kid. And, Two promo kids. Oh, He's I'm putting hyped. in the and we're pressure. Hyped. And we're hyped. And we're hyped. I like it. The pressure so promo is kid on. Is definitely one of the ways that green is able to win this game right like i said green's game plan is always early chip into alternative game plan so if that's the case this promo kid definitely facilitates that so if he has just a little bit of straw sword action we could potentially see an insane following turn since kevin has been defending so uh aggressively he's left with a much smaller hand size than he normally would but we also could just see a nice little flamingo here just kind of mitigating some damage. There's we the also can see Gecko Moria recycle the law, play the law down, and then like again, Ooh. and a passive Fista. Pass definitely fist. not what we want to see into and a Boa Hancock. Double blocker. So that, does he have the straw? This might still just be good enough. You know, you... Wow, this is very. This is a very tough point. Even if you do have the straw here, do you go ahead and expend the straw to try and potentially get two damage that's tough <coughs> well bless you we're gonna go ahead and uh 6k at lead we're just gonna go ahead and use a that law here nowhere, but um personally yes i would you want to put in the pressure the earlier pressure you have now the better it is your late game yeah the mortal payoff and i completely agree with you the only thing here is if by by suspending our promo kids we leave them susceptible to this pacifista to this crocodile and once we, we know that green is most possibly going to let, you know, these swings clear the kid. You can't expend your hand size in order to do that. Yeah. So it's very tough. He hasn't been able to successfully take a damage from his opponent, which is just what the blue player wants, while also maintaining 
board control. And this is a fantastic card here. As we see the law, the wow. law is oof, spicy. He's putting in the pressure. Yeah, and he's just going to take those double blocks. Agreed with that. Now, the question is, uh, we could leave this promo kid active in order to have it used for the following turn. And this is exactly what he goes for. He goes for, he. I'm going to take a damage to turn in the form of six with my leader. And I'll make sure that this kid at least is active for the following. Very, very nice. Unfortunately, though, this play is still very open to a lot of uh, counter. As we can go ahead and five at the kid that is rested. Um, if he tries to combo out of it, then you pass a Fista and then you Dofi the other one. And then he's in a very tough spot, right? So it, it's we're not out of the woods just yet, even with that fantastic law. So we're going to go ahead and see the Pacifista. Pacifista. Yeah. Pacifista first. <clears throat> this is fine. I mean, is was 5k equal to 6k there? I guess is what I'm what I'm questioning. What do you think? Uh Would you have tried to save your kid if the crocodile swung into kid? No. Nah, I I just let it go. I don't see a reason. Okay, understood. So that's, we could have saved the Pacifista for later, but I guess it ends up in the same scenario. And we're just going to go and finally Sento. deploy this Sentamaru, which is the beautiful 6k turn. I mean, 6, <laughs> six dawn turn. I guess six it ends up being turn, a 6k, yeah. right? Because you get a 6k Pacifista. Yeah, but in and this he case... he gets to leave two open, too. So, wow, he slams that bad boy down. And you know what I've noticed about Kevin? Kevin doesn't even look at his deck. He's just like, yep, I summoned Pacifista. Yeah, so there's been arguments about uh, whether... Players are allowed to look at the deck or not when searching for a Pacifista. So, huh? I, you can tell by Kevin's um play that it's all right. I'm just gonna bring it out. I believe in the deck. He's not gonna search for it. Very interesting. I was unaware that that was something that was being argued. Interesting. He does. And he's gonna send... go ahead and minus four here. Very interesting. He has four left, I believe. Yeah, he's gonna go. Yeah, he's gonna go down no, he, to four. Very similar, right? One, two, three. Yeah, five. He's gonna go no, down five, to five. No, five, 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 five. Yeah, so he'll go down to seven for the next turn. So it's still he's he was on nine. So it's available that he do flamingos on the crackback, which is very fine. This is still a very difficult position to pilot out of for the captain. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and six k at lead. Six k at lead seems mighty fine to me. Yeah, we gotta somehow get him to you know closer and closer to lethal range. It's going to go ahead and take this, which triggers oh. the Kuma. Oh, I'm not a fan of this card at all, but respect. It's it's good pressure, that Kuma. Um, sometimes the cards in your hand, you don't, or at the top deck, you don't want it at the top. Sometimes you just throw them all at the bottom. And then there are times oh, yeah. where uh, you <clears> want <throat> one card at the top, and because you have a Sento Maru, the whole deck gets shuffled. No, no, he's definitely, in this specific board state, he's definitely proving to be a v asset more than a detriment so coming out of life making another 3k body while also rearranging the top of your deck sign me up dude yep. so let's see how he goes about doing this he could potentially make his opponent burn a life here depending on how much he decides to put into this kid he goes for eight i think eight's a very fine number specifically since kevin went ahead and left two open you don't want to overcommit into the love love beam so yep just like that he forces the love love beam. He forced the love love beam. He's going to go ahead and use Captain's effect. He's going to go ahead and tap another three. He's going to pitch the seven drop. And yep, he doesn't want to go ahead and go into a board state where he drops the seven and his opponent has the flamingo answer. Yeah. So I respect that very much. He's going to go ahead here and deploy what I'm assuming is a Bonnie. Yep. And that is a very good finish off to the turn, leaving two Dawn open for a potential repel scalpel while also searching the top of the deck and creating a pseudo blocker in the form of Bonnie. Yeah, like just... You never want to drop your seven cost kid in this matchup since that is actually more detrimental is than it is beneficial. Your beneficials in the blocker kid in this case is actually just putting your Dawn under kid and just going for broke. Like just hit them for as much damage you can. They can't block it. It's, it's huge. No, I, I've I've said it many times. That's and that's why I'm not a huge fan of playing green because green always devolves into the same game plan. It's always like I'm gonna do ch early chip and then captain take me <laughs> away to to the one piece, dude. We set yep. sail. Set sail to uh, one piece. 
And yeah, no, Eustace is very good. And that's why he's so good, especially especially when the new set comes out. He just gets even better cards. And the fact that his leader is just absolutely so good makes him potentially the the runner up for the not the runner up, but the the forefront or the the front runner for the best. Yeah, deck. front runner. He's front runner. That yeah, was the word. Is. Ah, English. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, because with the new uh first set coming out, Kaido is also just as good up there. Oh, I agree. I think Kaido do be very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see a 7 here. I'm assuming the 7 might be going at the Law. Just again, trying to mitigate as much damage as, as possible for the next turn. Mm -hmm. And by doing by clearing this Law, you can go ahead and try and do that. The thing is, you don't want to, again, overcommit into the uh, Repel, which we know he has in hand. So what is the adequate number? And I think 7 is a very good choice. Very. And that is the 7k, so mm -hmm. that means he was going for a Law. Yep, definitely went for the law. So he's going to go ahead and pitch two here to defend. I agree with this pitch. Uh, he still has another pacifista available to him if he wants to go ahead and maybe commit a little harder. I think you, I think it? I'd be down it? to go eight. Eight onto the law. No, he goes for another seven. He goes for another seven. I mean, seven might be equal to eight, and he has probably assessed that. Or you can just say, fine, this law can go. But as the green player, I, I'm not sure because I don't play green enough how detrimental it is losing this law. Um, having that one extra swing does make or break your game, especially towards the late game. Um, you see blue at two life. That's essentially three hits. You need three hits to win. Um, your kid can do 12k twice, but what's that going to do if they have, um, love, love beam or what if they have blockers? Uh, there's so many, uh, different outs. Mm -hmm. for and it looks like uh, Hector is going to go ahead and say, yeah, my scapel is worth more than my law. And I'm, I'd be willing to argue that that is the case. So he's going to go ahead and swing here with the Sentamaru. He's going to go ahead and swing here with the Crocodile. And this will finally fetch out the the Repel. Sorry. So the Repel is going to go ahead and allow him to become much more safe. And he's going to go past back straight to the kid. And now Ooh. here's where... He thinks he's safe because of the law, but even if you were to go ahead and heavily commit into this kid and double swing on the leader and we're able to burn one life, if he goes and tries to play safe into one more block on the following turn, Straw Sword just says, I'm going to kill you through the Straw Sword. So it's very interesting. Uh, let's see. We have... The thing is, we have kid at three life. You can't expend that much resource right now. It's... And that's the give and take. You can't fully commit to the 12k swingers, I guess what I'm trying to get at. You have to... Uh, you have to so he's putting three away. He's like, yeah, three to the side because he's restanding. Now the question is two to the side because I want to keep a repel up. So yeah. how much does he go to? He goes one, two, three, four, five, Don. Right. So he'll be a 10. He's left two, he's left two Don it's open. 10, he's, 10 is good. 10 is a good number. The thing is, it just feels bad to sack 10 into your opponent when they have a law on the board. You know Wait, what I mean? He goes for seven. Kind of down with that, too. 7 might be equal to 10, arguably. Yeah, he, he the 7 still fetches out the law. Now, if he wants to go ahead, yeah, he's going to go ahead and trigger the kid here. He's going to go ahead and pitch some sort of card that has no combo power. Yep, that'll do oh. it. Now, I'm not sure on the 7 here. I might have gone a little heavier here. As he left the 9 up with the Love Love Beam and the two, uh, the 2 Dawn up for the Love Love Beam, I think we had to commit into it. He doesn't even expend it. He'll go Mihawk plus Jinbei. Hmm. Hmm. And we, we lose a turn of dealing damage, which is not very good for us. We'll go ahead and One Bonnie. Four, well, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie. Bonnie does these, work. These, these searches are very important. These searches are what lets Green be so consistent. Hmm. So we're going to go ahead and add a law to our hand. Why law? We're going to pass here. Passing hmm. at three. Law is an interesting pickup there, as it doesn't really f fix your board state at all. Oh yeah, I, I, I've always I find it um, fascinating. Every time we see Kevin start his turn, uh, he just tosses his uh, guys out. <laughs> just like oh, yeah, yep. Well, so yeah, that that Kuma definitely will become the Bonnie Slayer nine thousand. Which yeah, I mean this Kuma is putting in a lot so, of work, dude. So much work. Yeah, right, he so came out. He came out of life. Rearranged the top. He's killed two Bonnies. He's he's doing God's work right now, man. He really is. All right. He's getting well, so much value because it's a so, three over a one. It, 
And no, you can't defend that. You can't. You can't that. It's not worth one. it. And you know, you don't want to chuck a five into a one either. So three into one feels very nice. Very, very nice. Six into a five. So he takes the hit. What is our win condition now for Green? I guess he has to hit into a killer in security or in life. Yeah. Killer he, would help so much. Killer would be very helpful here as he can killer the Sentamaru and then he can have one more swinger. If But then there's so much Dawn open on the blue side that it's very difficult to say, you know, what if it's enough. He's going for another 6k swing. Yeah, he's really just testing the waters. He doesn't have to commit heavy. He knows he has, like, Dawn Ooh, open. And he doesn't Moria. want to go ahead and do it. He's going to go Moria. Moria's going to go ahead and fetch, potentially, the Law or the Mihawk. He's going to go for the Law. The Law can go ahead and trade out for the Bartholomew. Yep, just like that. He does not need really it anymore. He, he it, doesn't it, need it, the, the Kuma has done enough. It, it's like two bodies. What more can you ask for? No, I agree. It really has. And at this point in time, the Law is much more... Like, it's much more effective at this board state. And he still is able to keep up two dawn for a potential love love beam. So it's a, an effective use of the of your of your dawn. Like there's so much I want to say, but I would prefer not to, because it does contain two spoilers in the manga. In case there are viewers here that do not that watch the anime and do not read the manga. Mm. Uh, there's so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to just relations. drop some spoilers. I understand. Yeah, I, I gotta gonna hold go it in. Now. Yeah, you got to hold those in. So we're going to go eight. It's going to get just chump locked by the law here. And, and now he with hard. he's got five swings coming at zero life. That's tough, dude. That is big tough. And you can't, even de you can't even deploy any blockers. Any blockers that you play will just immediately get bounced. He's going to go ahead and drop the straw sword. So that's what I'm saying. If last turn he was able to get one more piece of one, one more one more point of damage in, as opposed to playing the Bonnie and then searching, which the Bonnie just changed, like it just tutored for a law, which is an equivalent exchange. Had he put two more Dawn on Kid, would he have been able to take that damage? I, I don't know. Yeah. All right, so would you go for a 15 go for Broke Swing right now? I, I, I would do 15 over anything else. I would, go, I would go five on the Gecko first. Or you can five on the Crocodile. It's kind of irrelevant. But you go, definitely one of the fives goes in. Then the other five goes in. Then you go six, and then sixteen. Like I don't think he has enough. Even if we go to four, six, uh, fifteen. Yeah, but just to make it super oh, yeah. impossible, you just go with like with this board state, and then yeah, we will go ahead and repel this, and then you can attach everything to Sentamru. Would be kind of funny. No, 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 no! You gotta go crocodile now. Nah, you go <laughs> Sentamru, and then if he blocks a Sentamru, you can finish with a crocodile. And yeah, yeah, his hand was full of combo power but so it just much, wasn't yeah. enough not enough like yeah. he could not get the chip damage in oh uh, no. Ke kevin knew the matchup he knew that he cannot allow those chip damage to go in he has to stop them as early as possible he hits go for a hit block it go for a hit uh combo it go for a hit block it everything possible to make sure his life was at a safe zone no, and that's exactly what it comes down to. He played very, very well. It's just like there, there are lethal points in all decks, right? In purple, you never want to be at two. Well, against green, you never want to be at one. And against red, you never want to be at zero. I mean, Absolutely not. No, even it, one is not good. Even one, one is, is kind of spooky straight. versus yeah. red. But versus blue, you can be at very weird life totals and still feel very relatively safe unless they have a humongous board. But the yeah. other decks, there are very specific life totals that they just casually, you know, go for game.